In this video, we are gonna talk about the most recent herb that is hitting media in so many ways, and that is the herb that Thailand recently approved to help out with the recent virus. And we won't talk about the name of it because it'll get this video taken down. But I do have a blog post on this that I'm gonna direct you to with a lot more information. It is in the description of this video. So check that out if you don't wanna watch the video. I've got my computer here ready to go. You're gonna see me looking at it a lot because there's a lot of information about this herb that you need to know about and my little brain can't contain all the things. So let's get started with this week's video. All right, so like I said, I've got my computer here because I've got all this information on my website and guys, it is a doozy of information. And, and I, I can remember it all if I'm sitting here just talking to somebody, but once I open this video up and I start trying to go through it and make it like condensed for you, it's very hard. So this is kind of like an outline for me. So if you see me looking at my computer, I apologize try to do some fancy overlays of stuff that's pretty so you don't have to see me looking at it but until then this is real life real herbalism and I don't want to give you wrong information so you're just gonna see me look at my computer sometimes now so the herb that we're talking about today is called andrographis and the botanical name of it is andrographis pan panaculata panaculata um, yeah I don't know why I did that so yeah so this herb is pretty amazing it's more so in Asia than here I cannot tell you how many people have messaged me over the last few days asking me about this herb because they saw that it, um, Thailand approved it for the recent virus. And so I did a really in-depth blog post on it and I wanted to come here and talk to you, just kind of hit the highs and lows on YouTube as well. So common names for andrographis is, is, is king of bitters. Um, that's the most common name for it and the reason is because it's a bitter herb. The parts that are used are often the leaves and flowers, roots, and of course all parts can be used. I'm gonna go through that really quickly. Um, the whole plant, just in, as a whole, can be used and it's most often used for snake bites and insect sting treatment, uh, dyspepsia, uh, influenza, dysentery, malaria, and respiratory infections. And by the way, I'm not just shooting this off at the hip. All of this is scientifically proven. No fake news here, so um, all the studies that I'm referencing and all the information I'm giving you actually has a study to back it. So check out the blog post if you wanna look at those studies. Um, the leaf is commonly used for fever, colic pain, loss of appetite, irregular stools and diarrhea, common cold, cough, fever, hepatitis, tuberculosis, mouth ulcers, bronchitis, gastrointestinal or disorders, and sores. Uh, the aerial part of it is used for the common cold, hypertension, diabetes, cancer, malaria and snake bite and urinary tract infections. And then the root has a little bit less value, but it has a power punch. Um, and that's used uh, for parasites, tonics, uh, for the stomach and things like that. Uh, so andrographis is native to India. And in fact, it's still such uh, a very uncommon herb to use that we're not really cultivating it in commercial settings. Which is a good thing because um, it's not as easy to corrupt, okay? Which is also a bad thing because most of the places that it's grown is wild. And so we're kind of raping the ground as we start really getting into this and people want that demand for this herb. Um, and so there are some places in India that are starting to successfully grow it in commercial type settings. Uh, it only grows well in zones 10 through 12. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you don't live through those, through those growing zones, then you would actually need a heated greenhouse and probably some lighting to actually grow it. Uh, it has some pretty incredible immune stimulating properties overall. It's one of the best uh, herbs for the immune system and so to prevent the common cold as well. Um, it's not new by any means. It's been around for quite some time. It's, it's been used throughout traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, it's been used throughout Indian medicine and so it's not new um, but it is something that most of us are hearing for the first time because it's just it's an Asian herb that we don't typically use and I went over this in my course. By the way if you haven't signed up for the Homestead Herbalist Virus course um, I'm going to put a shameless plug here and you can sign up uh, for it right now. Anyhow, so um, 
Antrographis is most commonly known as for the upper respiratory tract and for its liver protecting properties, okay? So it's most studied for those effects as well, but it has been studied uh, in other places. Now, uh, for other reasons. So, you know, in the past, herbalists have talked about um, liver damage and protecting your liver. Uh, so if you're taking things like acetaminophen for a fever or pain, which I don't recommend, but some people still have to do it, um, then we would often, herbalists would often recommend that you take milk thistle with that because it protects your liver from damage. Well, andrographis is the same thing. And in fact, it's a little bit more powerful than milk thistle. So keep that in mind. Um, I keep milk thistle on hand at all times, but now I'm gonna be keeping andrographis on hand at all times. Um, so it's not an herb that I can grow. And so I did buy, um, you know, a lot of it when I got it. Okay, so it's also been studied for the upper respiratory tract. So let me just go through a few things. Um, Andrographis has been studied to be antiplatelet, a uh, fever reducer, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antiviral. Uh, it, it can cause spontaneous abortion, so if you are pregnant or trying to get pregnant, you don't want to do that. The reason for that is because it can cause uterine contractions mostly. Uh, it is antimicrobial. It is used as a bitter tonic, uh, which is basically an herb that strengthens and tones your specific organs or the entire body, and it cause sal uh, causes salivation to help you digest things better. Um, it's a bile stimulator. It's hepatoprotective, which is the liver protection that I was telling you. It's an immunostimulant and it is an adaptogen. Okay, so it's believed to protect against free radical damage and to help normalize blood sugar. So this thing does a lot. <laughs> it does a lot and a lot of herbs do a lot of things, um, but this herb really does a lot. Um, and so we, there are other things that it, does. it helps with like dysentery, flatulence, gastroenteritis, loss of appetite, um, skin conditions, uh, acute and chronic cough, sore throat, fever, headache, colitis. Uh, it's been very well known to um, heal ulcerative colitis. I mean, it's, I was very surprised actually when I spent hours researching this herb for you guys and it, it the studies done on ulcerative colitis, which I'm gonna to get to in a second, are very, very promising. Um, so if that's something that you deal with, and I have a lot of friends that deal with that, um, that is something that you should consider putting into your apothecary. Uh, it helps with eczema, sores, bronchitis, infectious diseases in general, pneumonia, um, tonsillitis, cholera, malaria. It's been studied very well for malaria and rabies. Uh, all right, so in various European studies, uh, Antrographis has been shown to have great effects on all types of upper respiratory tract infections. We're going to call those URTs just for the sake of it. Um, it was shown to offer significant throat symptom relief, uh, such as inflammation and sore throat. And the efficacy was comparable to acetaminophen. So in the study, the efficacy against pain and fever was comparable to acetaminophen. Not kind of comparable, but it was comparable to acetaminophen. So that's pretty much a game changer. And for me, when I saw that, um, that was when the moment when I said, I've got to have this herb in my apothecary. But uh, most common modern uses for andrographis is to prevent and treat common cold and viruses. Uh, much like elderberry, andrographis inhibits viruses from replicating and attaching to cells. See, I told you guys this was gonna happen. Um, in the H1N1 pandemic in 2009, this is when elderberry came on the scene. Some, some scientists decided to do a study on elderberry because he knew the background of it, and then boom, elderberry was the new herb that everybody knew about because it inhibited the H1N1 virus from replicating in our cells. Well, in a Thailand study, let me go down to my COVID portion of it. Ooh, let me go down to my virus portion of it. Portion of it. Um, it showed that phytochemicals from the herb were shown to have potency against the virus, uh, and it evidenced its microscopic mechanisms through rational computational modeling. Now that's important because it was computational modeling, um, but it did show promise in binding towards all four targets of of the cells, the spike protein um, and catalytic uh, catalytic site required inhibiting the targets in a therapeutic way. So. Um, 
So it was actually a study that showed that both the andrographis extract uh, was the active component, uh, which was, uh, it's called andrographolide, is the active component in andrographis. Um, it showed potent inhibitory effects against the virus. Um, and it was the equivalent to uh, remdesivir, which is, um, for the sake of just keeping it simple, it is one of the drugs that um, common hospitals were giving to patients that had the virus. So the biggest thing about this herb, though, is that it was proven most effective when it was taken within the first 72 hours of diagnosis of the 2019 virus. Um, with a confirmed positive test, but you don't have to have a confirmed positive test in order to take it, obviously. But that was when, um, as soon as symptoms occurred or within 72 hours of a confirmed positive test, that was the best time frame for the body to be the most receptive and responsive to the herb in these studies. Um, uh, in October of 2020, actually, uh, the chemical constituents from turmeric and the combination of turmeric and the andrographis um, were actually kind of meshed together and they showed significant binding with active site of the virus. Um, and I go through the specifics, the scientific specifics about that. Um, and it actually, when compared to, to drugs like hydroxychloroquine, hopefully that name doesn't get this video taken down, um, it was actually more effective uh, than than that drug. So that's something to consider as well. Um, let's go through, uh, let's see. So andrographis essentially is antiviral against the virus, as with is turmeric. Um, and it's very important because both of the herbs are very active inflammatory, anti-inflammatories, and they showed a, a significant ability for the virus not to bind to the cells in your body, much like elderberry did in the H1N1 pandemic in 2009. Um, so besides that, the herb in general is something that you should really think about having on hand in your apothecary. It, it's been studied to prevent the common cold, much like elderberry. Uh, it inhibits viruses from replicating and attaching to cells. In a double-blind placebo-controlled parallel group clinical study, uh, it, it was to evaluate the effect of andrographis um, extract. Okay, now keep in mind this particular study it had other substances in it, but the main substance in this um, extract was andrographis. And it really was the only herb to make sense in how it was able to treat acute upper respiratory tract infections, including sinusitis. And it also had echinacea in it. So, um, you know, if you wanted to, to make a powerhouse tincture, I would use the andrographis graphis, turmeric, and echinacea as well. But in children from the ages of 4 to 11, year old, 11 years of age, they took the herbal protocol and they had less severe symptoms, they had faster recovery, and needed significantly less standard medication when it came to the common cold and influenza. Um, they also, it, it, it reduced influenza, influenza symptoms by 52.7% including cough, expectoration, nasal discharge, headache, fever, sore throat, fatigue, and sleep disturbance. Um, other studies have done have showed that subjects recovered from symptoms, uh, even like severe sinusitis, uh, sinusitis and, um, and post-influenza complications such as pneumonia uh, didn't happen. So it's not only a good preventative, it's also good for healing during common cold and flu, and it's also good for secondary infections, which is very, very important. Uh, so andrographis root, root extract has shown to decrease uh, blood pressure as well. So if you're taking blood pressure medication, that's something you need to keep in mind. Um, basically, it inhibits platelet aggregation or blood clots. Uh, in a study, it did that for 63 patients with cardio or cerebrovascular diseases, and within three hours, the effects were seen of the uh, inhibiting of platelet aggregation and then even more significant benefits after one week. So this shows that it could be a promising herb for things such as myocardial inf infarcation uh, and various other things that have to do with your blood pressure. 
Uh, and then there's the ulcerative colitis study that, that was done. There's a few of those, but in 2018, the study showed that ulcerative colitis is obviously an auto, autoimmune response and that andrographis inhibits the activation of certain cells in your body um, and processes in your body. And it, it inhibits pro-inflammatory factors. So that suppressed inflammation response. And so therefore it resulted in relieving completely ulcerative colitis. Uh, it's also good for rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and I'm also making tinctures for several people that I know that deal with rheumatoid arthritis. If you know about RA, it's also an autoimmune disease. Um, you're kind of noticing this trend for autoimmune disorders with this herb. And so I think, I think that more studies should be done on that. Um, but of course I'm not a scientist, so I can't do them. But my theory as an herbalist is that it's a very good herb for autoimmune disorders. Of course, we also know that autoimmune disorders are, uh, you know, an unbalance in the body. Um, so that needs to be addressed as well. But in a 2009 study done, all of the women in the study that received andrographis experienced a significant reduction in tender joints, number of swollen joints, and total grade of tender joints. And then in 2019, double-blind randomized placebo-controlled clinical trial of 103 patients, andrographis patients, uh, with a standardized extract that they received, it was shown that it was effective and safe in reducing pain in individuals suffering from mild to moderate knee osteoarthritis. And then finally, as if it didn't already have amazing benefits enough, uh, in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled crossover clinical trial, uh, a proprietary mixture of andrographis uh, with another herb um, exhibited improved cognitive performance in elderly subjects that had mild cognitive impairment. Uh, and so it showed significant improvement in cognitive performance in a D2 test for attention and the concentration performance test after four weeks of treatment. So I have just unloaded a whole ton of information on you about this herb, but I feel like it's very important, um, especially as, as you dive more into herbalism and you hear media talk about these things, but they don't really talk about it. They just tell you, oh, hey, Thailand is using this herb for this virus and then that's it. It's important for you to know what it does. Um, first of all, especially if you're taking other medication, and then it's important for you to know what it does in the sense of not just for that virus, but what does it do? What are all the other things that it does? What are all the other things it can help with? Now, I'm not telling you to run out and buy this herb. Um, in fact, I, you, you probably shouldn't, you know, buy it in a huge amount of bulk because you know we've got to leave enough for people, right? Um, but I am telling you, hey, grab a bag of it. Right now, the only thing I can find for andrographis is powder. Uh, my intention is to make that powder stretch. Uh, you can make tinctures out of powder. Not my personal preference, but it is possible. And you would just do it the same way you would make any other tincture. Um, so I am going to be doing uh, just an andrographis and turmeric root tincture. And you can find that recipe on my blog post, which I've linked below. Um, but I think I will also probably do an andrographis turmeric root and an echinacea tincture as well. Um, Tinctures are best because they preserve your herbs the longest. If you were to just buy a bag and leave it on your shelf, I would recommend getting rid of that bag within two years. Um, so that's it. That's all about the herb. That's all about how I'm going to be using it. I'll be creating the tincture. The dosage is in there for you on the blog post. Important information is in there on the blog post. Uh, the other people that should be careful with this, um, with this herb are people who are already taking immune suppressing drugs. Uh, such as um, patients with uh, organ transplants, because much like astragalus, it is a powerhouse on the immune system with the immune system working alongside it. Um, and there have been doctors that have had to tell people to stop taking astragalus because it causes their immune system to stimulate and be effective so well that um, it's do having an adverse side effect on the drug that's trying to immune suppress their, their immune system. So those are just things to think about. There is a lot more, more detailed information in that blog post that, I've, that I wrote. Um, again, it's linked below. Check it out. If you want more information, check it out. If you want to know the dosage and how to make the tincture. And if you have any questions, be, feel free to comment below. 
Uh, as always, I'm here to answer any questions that I get within the first you know, couple of days of the video. After that, I don't really have a lot of time to go through all of the questions, but I try to get to them as much as possible. If you've not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. If you've not yet enrolled for the Homestead Herbalist Virus course, I've linked that down below as well. It's a mini course. It's on sale as of right now. Today is making this video January 9th. Um, hopefully we'll come out this video in the next couple of days. Um, and the course launches mid, uh, January, mid, later mid January. Um, so right now it's on pre-sale discount. After that, it goes up to the regular price. So check that out below. If you're interested on in more information about navigating viruses naturally in this season of life with herbs and natural remedies and, um, yeah, I think we're really going to enjoy it. We have a lot of students already signed up and we're really excited. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. And as always, happy homesteading and happy herbing. Mm -hmm.